Hi everybody, I'm Bob Kovacs, and this is my review of the Full Aim X5 dual transmitter wireless microphone system. This is the charging case for the X5, and I'll be talking more about the charging case. But let's take a look at what comes with the microphone system and how impossibly tiny it is. This is the older Full Aim 1000. This is the receiver. This is the transmitter. I thought these were small. They were small to me at the time. This is the new X5. This is the transmitter and this is the receiver. Compare the two transmitters, the older transmitter and the newer transmitter, and obviously the newer one is much smaller. The same is true with the receivers. Typically, I mount the receiver on top of the camera and I thought the 1000's receiver was so small and lightweight that it put no stress on the camera's hot shoe. And the new X5's receiver is smaller and lighter still, so it puts even less stress on the camera. This is the older Full Aim 1000 Pro. This is the new Full Aim X5. The X5 comes with a charging case, just like the 1000. It also has a USB-C to standard USB cable, and a cable that connects the receiver to a camera. It's got two wind muffs, and it has two adapters that allow you to connect the receiver to an iPhone or an Android phone or tablet, as well as connect to a laptop. All of those things also came with the Full Aim 1000, but the 1000 also came with two lavalier clip-on microphones. The X5 does not come with the microphones. Inside the charging case, under the lid, are four ultraviolet emitters so that when you close the lid with the components inside when they're charging, they bathe the components in ultraviolet for five minutes to kill any germs. So I've never heard of that before, and that's a pretty interesting feature. I don't know how important it is, but it certainly is an interesting feature. The transmitters are very small. They have a good quality microphone built into the end, but me personally, I typically like to work with a clip-on microphone. Fortunately, the X5 transmitter has a 3.5 millimeter jack for a clip-on microphone. Generally, that's how I will be using it, although the built-in mics are pretty good. Just to show that the X5 works with a clip-on or lavalier microphone, this is one of the microphones that came with the Full Aim 1000 Pro that I got before I had the X5. Also, it works just fine with this $13 microphone that I got from Amazon a couple years ago. Works just fine with it. So you don't need a fancy expensive clip-on mic if that's the way you're going to go. The transmitter has a clip on the back to attach it to your shirt. And on the clip, the clip must have some steel in it because it comes with this little magnet that really sticks firmly. Why a magnet? Because with a magnet, now you can attach this to a t-shirt or a sweater, something that doesn't have a pocket or doesn't have a ridge that allows you to use the clip. You can just stick it right onto a t-shirt. One of the very cool features about the X5 is that it has a built-in audio recorder in the transmitter. And that means if you get a dropout, and wireless microphones do get dropouts, I'll be talking more about dropouts. If you do get a dropout, assuming you are recording it, you have the recorder turned on, you have a safety valve in the recorder. In other words, your audio is perfectly recorded within the actual transmitter so that you can get it off the transmitter, sync it up, and have perfect audio, even if the wireless link fails. Here's a quick test of that that I did with a bus driving by. So let's say I'm talking on the side of the street and using the wireless microphone, and a bus goes by. A bus is probably going to cause a dropout in the signal. That's why I have this set to record. So let's say I'm talking on the side of the street and using the wireless microphone and a bus goes by. A bus is probably going to cause a dropout in the signal. That's why I have this set to record. This is my stress test for the distance that this wireless mic can go. How well can the X5 wireless mic cover a distance? They're so small, the batteries are so small, how much power can they possibly have? Now they work at 2.4 gigahertz and they use a frequency hopping technique to enable them to stay in touch. And I've already confirmed that the transmitters and receivers do send a signal back and forth. They know when each other is connected. So that's kind of an interesting thing. Anyway, uh, right now I'm very close to the camera. 
I have the two transmitters on my collar. One of them I have set to have its noise reduction on, the other the noise reduction is off, and both of them are set to record my signal. So when it drops out wirelessly, I will still have the recording of what I'm talking about. So right now I'm like a meter and a half away, like four to five feet away from the camera. So I'm gonna back up. Now I'm probably about three meters or 10 feet and should still have a perfectly good connection at this distance. I'm gonna back up some more. Now I'm approaching probably about 50 feet, uh, about uh, 16 or so meters away from the camera. I don't know if I still have a connection or not. I assume I still do. My cameraman is nodding yes. So I'm going to move away. Now, uh, I have each of these transmitters connected to a different channel. One's on the right channel, one's on the left channel, so that I'll be able to test them. And right now, somebody fired up a lawnmower down the street. That'll be an interesting test to see if the noise reduction will be able to cut some of that noise out. Again, one of the mics has noise reduction on, the other has noise reduction off. So I'm moving further down the driveway. Here I'm about at 75 feet. Let's call this, I don't know, 20, 22 meters or so. Don't know if I still have a connection. And the cameraman is nodding. And I'm going all the way down into the street this time. And the middle of the street is about 100 feet or about 30, 31 meters away. So do I still have, I still have a good connection? Wow, that's pretty nice. Okay, now I'm gonna walk off to the side. And when the house blocks me, I expect that the connection will drop. So I'm assuming that the connection went away there. I'm going to come back in within sight of the camera. Okay, did you lose me when I walked over there? Okay, it was if he was breaking up. Okay, that's good. That's what I want. I'm going to walk around down this way. And so this is really pretty good performance, actually, that they held steady while I was in the middle of the street. And I'm going to come back to the middle of the street now. And again, did you lose me when I went out that way? A little iffy. Okay, some breakup. That's good. But here it's clear. No breakup when I'm standing here. That's really pretty darn good performance. So do I still have, I still have a good connection. Wow, that's pretty nice. Okay, now I'm going to walk off to the side. And when the house blocks me, I expect that the connection will drop. So I'm assuming that the connection went away there. I'm going to come back in within sight of the camera. Okay, did you lose me when I walked over there? Okay, it was if he was breaking up. Okay, that's good. That's what I want. I'm going to walk around down this way. And so this is really pretty good performance, actually, that they held steady while I was in the middle of the street. And I'm going to come back to the middle of the street now. And again, did you lose me when I went out that way? A little iffy. Okay, some breakup. That's good. But here it's clear. No breakup when I'm standing here. That's really pretty darn good performance. Let's see how much farther I can go. So this is probably another 10 meters further away. Call it, third, call it uh, 41, 42 meters away from the camera. Is my connection okay? Still good. That is impressive. Okay, I'm gonna go, going to go another 10 meters. Wow. Okay, let's see if it is about, let's call it uh, 150 feet or about 50 plus meters away from the camera. You still get me? Still nodding yes. That is a, actually in my experience, that is a spectacular performance for a wireless microphone that it can cover that distance. Now it's line of sight. I can see the camera. The camera can see me. And, but that is still, in my experience, spectacular, especially considering the small size that these transmitters and receivers are. These are really tiny. Therefore, they have a small battery. Therefore, they can't transmit with a lot of power. But obviously, it is doing a terrific job. And I'm very curious to know if the digital noise reduction that the one unit has turned on is making a difference in the background noise that you can hear. There's also just a little bit of a breeze, so we might be getting some wind noise from time to time, but it's going pretty well, I guess. So you're gonna probably have to tilt up to get me when I get close to you. Boy, does it smell good. Too bad the transmitters can't uh, 
can't transmit the smell that we're getting. It really smells delicious here right now. So that is my distance stress test of the Full Aim X5 microphone. I took the Full Aim X5 to a big trade show, the National Association of Broadcasters, where I was hired by a company to shoot photos and to shoot videos at their booth at this big trade show. In general, it went well, but I quickly learned that there was a lot of RF in the atmosphere there, and that caused a lot of breakup whenever I used the wireless connection of the Full Aim X5. In fact, I would be using it from four, five, six feet away, less than two meters, and still be getting breakup. Wireless mics will break up. You have to understand that. But with the RF in the atmosphere there, and one guy told me that even his Bluetooth headphones were breaking up on him every few feet as he walked around, with all of that RF in the atmosphere there, I found that I couldn't rely on the wireless connection, that I had to rely on the built-in recorder in the full AMX5 transmitters. So here's what it was like at the booth where I was shooting the video, where I tried using the wireless connection, and then when I also had the uh, recorder going at the same time. So here's what it sounded like without the recorded sound, with the breakup I was getting with the wireless connection, and here's what it sounded like with the recorded sound. So as a user, you go to a website, web GUI, you log in, and there's two types, two categories of uh, administrators. So as a user, you go to a website, web GUI, you log in, and there's two types, two categories of uh, administrators. Overall, I really like the Full Aim X5 wireless microphone system. I just can't believe how small it is. At least a couple of days now, I've walked around with all of the components. That's two transmitters, a receiver, and a cable to connect it to my camera. I've walked around with all of the components in a shirt pocket and didn't even really notice that they were there. That's how easy it is to carry a full two transmitter wireless microphone system. So the size and weight are fabulous. Perfect if you're a vlogger, if you need to carry something on the run. Uh, now, as with any wireless microphone, there will be dropouts if you rely on the wireless connection, especially if you go further distances away. There will be dropouts if you're working in high RF environments. Of course, the X5 has a built-in recorder. I've had the recorder fail a couple times, so you have to be careful about that as well. But generally speaking, the recorder will cover up for any possible failures of the wireless connection. Overall, I really like the X5. It just performs beautifully and the small size makes it so convenient to carry. Hey everybody, I'm Bob Kovacs. Thanks for watching.